Hey, welcome to another Spurchock this time tutorial. And we're going to be making some cool kind of freeform surfaces which are driven by curves. So you can essentially just position curves in 3D space as an artist and have some kind of control. And then Spurchock is going to go and create you some surfaces. We're going to do three different kinds of surface, like a straight one like this. We're going to do one similar to this parametric wall tutorial by Code Plastic. I'll link his original tutorial actually down below. He does a bit of a different process. Very cool. It's like a wave wall made out of cuts. Yeah, I'll link his down in the description as well. Very good tutorial. His is working with meshes. We're going to be keeping to curves and nerve surfaces. So that's how we're going to work today. And I'll do another one where we're actually bending a uh, kind of a new surface, a new shape that we've made. I'll use like a hex grid or a triangle grid or something even bricks or something like that, bending that to the surface. Cool, so I am in Blender. I will be using three in this one. First thing we wanna do is jump into Spurchock, create a new node tree, hit N and check for updates. This is gonna be the first thing you do every time you open Spurchock, just to make sure you're up to date with the latest versions. I tend also to protect the node tree. So give it a fake user just to make sure if I do like a recursive unused data blocks, we don't end up deleting this node tree because that would be Kind of annoying and i'm just going to rename this one to uh, parametric surface first thing that we're going to want to do is add a bunch of curves so let's just add some curves into our 3d viewport here shift d a couple times here and we're just going to do something simple to begin with and then we can do a chair once we have kind of debugged a little bit and understand what we're working with let's just make one of these bigger maybe change the handles on this one a little bit there we go so they're they're all a bit different now select all three and in Spurchark we can add a scene bezier in. And what this node does is it allows us to take curves from the 3D viewport and bring them into Spurchock as curve objects. And this is really, really useful. You can see now if I was to add a curves, evaluate curve at the bottom, and then just control shift click on there. So you can see now that we have these curves in Spurchock here. So they're curves. And uh, if we change any of these curves and update to a new frame, then you can see that that will take the changes. Cool. So what we're actually working with here is not going straight into curves. We want to turn this straight into a surface. So we can use surfaces, surface from curves, and we can just plug this in like so. And let's have a look at this with a surface evaluate surface, which is at the bottom. So at the moment, this is just doing a linear interpolation from one curve to the next to the next. And you can see while it is following the curve sort of in, in its surface, just rotate that a little bit and update. So you can see it's, it's following it, but it's not changing the topology to follow it. So we're keeping this quite neat quad topology stretching across all three curves. Now, if I was to change my interpolation mode from linear to cubic, then you can see that we start to get more of a flowing shape between our curves. And we also have an option for B-spline on here. I'm gonna stay with cubic just because it gives the, in my opinion, the nicest fall off. So because this updates on every frame change, what I can do with a very simple scene like this is I can play the timeline and actually move this around to get more of like a live update. And you can see that this is basically allowing us to create a surface very simply just out of curves. So instead of using these curves in this way, what I wanna do is create a kind of a chair. We're gonna be doing this in three different ways. So we're gonna do it with just a surface. With a cut surface, we will also do one where we're tessellating a new surface over this surface so that we can get some kind of pattern. What I'm gonna do now is basically just start again with some new curves. So this time I wanna be creating a chair. So I'm just gonna add a couple curves in here. Uh, let's rotate these up to 90. Here we go, let's create something fairly simple. Let's do a bit of a rocking chair. I might have to adjust my scale in a sec afterwards. Cool, and let's just make this a proper, proper size. Probably wanna be about 1.5 high. Yeah, with a seat about 300 mil up. That's probably about right. Let's apply that transform and i'm just going to pull this one off the axes draw shift d and move this one out a little bit as well tab into edit mode let's grab some points on here that will give us a little bit of uh, of an interesting shape so let's bring both of these in like them both shift a and then we will add a bezier in get selection so now we have these two and then we're going to do the same again so surface surface from curves join in this and then we're going to grab a surface evaluate surface here we go and this just lets us look at the surface we're creating cool so so far so good we have a little bit of weird offsetting going on 
as you can see here, this is just because we have different resolution, different number of handles, and uh, yeah, it's just making things look a little bit strange. Yeah, you can see that's really offset there. So what we want to do again is do our naturally parameterized, naturally, naturally re-parameterized curves. So curve, scroll down, naturally parameterized, parameterized, set this to something like a thousand, and that'll just make it nice and accurate. Looking good so far, but I've only got half a chair. I want this to be mirrored. And if I was to mirror this at this point, I mean, let's do it. So let's let's grab a uh, transform, symmetrize mesh, do this and this. And then we're going to go from minus Y or maybe positive to negative. There we go. And you can see it's not, for a start, it's not joined up. But also, this is not really a uh, cubic interpolation across there. We want this to be like a, a curve around like this. If we can't just symmetrize our mesh, then what we need to do is actually need to be creating two new curves that are symmetrical. But how do we create a symmetrical curve? If we go into here, there's nothing for symmetrizing or mirroring curves. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to apply a field to the curves. If you've not worked with fields before, then essentially fields just allow you to apply. You can think of it like applying pressure, like a magnetic field based on like noise or Voronoi or maybe using an image, or maybe using a surface or another curve. In this case, we're just going to do a vector field formula because we're going to be using inputs that we make ourselves. It's actually quite simple. So let's go into our curves here, apply a field to the curve so we can join up our curve there and I can join in the field. And let's make sure that we can see our curve. So let's grab an evaluate curve node here like this and then just control shift click on there. Interesting. So right now what's happened is our x has been given minus y. Our y is being given x and z is being given z. I mean, if I was to set all of these to zero, then there's no change, right? There's no um, force being applied to our curve. If I was going to apply a constant force of one to the z, well, if we look at our grid, we can see that this is moved up by one unit, by one meter. What I want to do is I want to apply a force to the y, but I want it to be inverse to the y because if i was to just to apply you know a force of one over here then it's just going to move the whole thing if i was to apply y to it then it's going to double the positions it's going to make y twice as strong so we want to go minus y but anything subtract itself is zero so that's why we're now on the zero position so we need to do this times two so all we've done is we've basically said y times two, just apply it in the opposite direction. So just literally y plus minus two y, and that's going to just give us minus y. I know fields can get a little bit confusing, but that is all you have to do. We can now rejoin our curves in here. This is not a multi-input socket, so we're going to need a list main list join. And let's just throw these together like so. And now if I view my surface output, we just have a little bit more cleaning up to do here. So what's going on? Let's change our surface from curves to cubic, just to give us a little bit of interpolation. And I want to understand what's going on with our surfaces. I'm going to turn off my edges and my faces, and we can see that we have basically this going on. So we have zero, one, two, three, because we can see that this is coming around and then it's curving back in underneath itself there. So that is because this is going up in this direction and then we've mirrored it. So now it's going in this direction. So therefore I need to reverse these two curves. I need them to go in the opposite direction. Quite simply, we can just add a list, list structure, list reverse, drop it on here, set this to level one, done, nice and simple. So now we have a chair kind of thing. It's got a proper interpolation across it here. So nice and round. And uh, we're free to essentially model it now with our two curves. We can move things up refresh it by changing the frame this maybe make this a little bit wider here which is where it comes out there now there's a couple of things that we want to do with this surface first of all what we can do is we can just export this as a as a viz mesh viewer select both these hit v and that's going to automatically join those go to rendered view and turn on my ground plane there create a new material and let's make this a kind of dark gray just so that we can see it properly. There we go. I'm also gonna make it so that I can't actually select my chair object because I always wanna be able to select these in its place, right? Actually, that kind of looks cool, just moving that over. We have this surface 
And what I can do now is I can just apply a few modifiers. So let's apply a solidify modifier. And then I might apply a subdivide surface just to kind of smooth it out, give it some nice roundness. And if I want to make this smooth shading, by the way, I can either select it and hit smooth. But any time that you change anything in the node tree, it's going to make it unsmooth again. It's going to redraw it and it's going to recreate this object. So you need to make sure that your mesh viewer, if you press N, go to node properties, just make sure you to tell this to smooth shade. So there we go. Now we have a nice little chair. I want to do a couple more things alongside this. So we're going to move this one. Literally just grab the matrix here. Let's move it sideways by five. That's nicely out of the way. Now we still have our curves and we're going to be working on a new one. So we're going to be taking our surface again. And this time we want to solidify it inside the node tree. So let's grab a solidify, just search solidify there, drop it on, connect up your polys. And there we go. So you can see this is basically working the same way. So I'm not going to go too thick, but I'm not, I don't want it to be too thin in this case either. So this is going to work for me. And now what I want to do is bisect it. So this is how we're going to make our, um, our slices. We're going to use a bisect node. Just going to drop this on here. So these vertices, polys go in and we're going to select in our polys here as well. Now this has a bunch of options at the moment. It's like, oh, well, nothing's happened. What's going on? Turn off inner and outer. And that's going to basically remove any mesh, which is not part of our bisect, like our cut. And I'm just going to create a new cut matrix on here. And as I move this up, you can kind of see that something's happening. Just turn off that floor again. And if I hit fill, then you can see even better what's going on. So we're getting this kind of shape here. What we need to do is make lots of shapes. And I also don't want them to be vertical cuts. I want them to be horizontal or like a cut lengthway through the chair. So let's also rotate this by 90. And let's have a look at our axes. Which one is it? It's going to be our X. Yeah, our X axis that we're cutting through here. It's going to be our rotation axis. And now you can see if I move this in Y, you can see the kind of cuts that we're going to be making through this chair. How do I know where these cuts are going to be? Well, I can find out where the chair is by using a analyze bounding box and literally just connect this up to the solidify. And you can see that this bounding box is the maximum size of our chair. What I'm interested in is where the max and min Y values are. So let's grab both of these and then I'm going to use this with a number range. So number range, go start, stop with our range. And I want to know how big my step size is because that's going to be how much I solidify these sheets by. It's going to be around about an inch, so 0 0.024. And then this needs to go into a vector. So let's join up a new vector here. Now and I have a look at my bisect, you can see that we have all of these cuts going through. If I was to go and uh, actually solidify these. So in order for us to do this, we're going to want to connect this up to a mesh viewer. There we go, just neatening these up. So let's grab a biz mesh viewer, connect this up like this, hit V. Now we have all of these surfaces. Let's merge just so that we've got them all as one. We can delete the temporary viewer. Let's select this object, add a modifier, add a solidify. The reason I'm doing this inside the modifiers instead of inside the node tree is just because the modifiers are a bit faster. We go into the top view and let's turn off the overlays. So you can see if I increase the thickness on these, some of them are going one direction and some of them are going the other direction. This is not, not the behavior that we want. We want everything to be going kind of evenly around those cuts. So rather than the offset being minus one, we just set this to zero and that will actually solve all of our problems. Now you could actually go in here and flip normals based on the current normal direction, but it's just easier to change your offset value. And the reason I like doing it this way is because, well, partly because it's easier and partly also because I'm going to be mirroring this. And I want to mirror it because, just hide the solid one, you can see that the two sides are not the same. So I would like this to be actually the same. So I want to symmetrize my bisect. So let's grab a transform, symmetrize mesh, Join this one up like this. Join this one up like this. You can create some really cool things by symmetrizing, by the way. If you're ever just like at a loss for what to play with, make some cool stuff and just symmetrize it. We are going from, uh, let's go from positive Y to negative Y, and that's just going to give us a few more. So we know that our step size is 0 0.024. So let's make sure that we are solidifying 0 0.024. 
This means that we won't get any overlap on here. And I'm also going to make sure this is shading smooth. So press N, shade smooth. And I want to get back my sharp corners so I can turn on auto smooth here. I might also add a bevel modifier. So we're going to go 0 0.005. Angle limit of 80, just so it's only happening on these edges. And let's turn off clamp overlap. Might even make that a little bit smaller. 3.02, just so that we have a nice bevel on there. I think that's working all right. So this is chair number two. We're going to call this one, well, let's give it SV material again. And let's call this one Bitact, just because that is what that one is. I really love how these come out. This final one that we're going to be doing here is by bending a, um, a new mesh object essentially over our surface and this is one of the great things about working with surfaces is that we can use them as a field so fields again move this up a little bit just so i have access so we're going to be using our surface from curves which is creating this initial surface that we're using and i want to create for example a hexagon grid or something like that so i'm going to use a generator generators extended uh, you could use a bricks grid polygon grid, pentagon tiler, you could use anything that you wanted. Um, I'm going to use a polygon grid and this will give us something like this. Let's use hexagons just because they're kind of trendy. We don't need to worry about the size of the scale or anything like this because it's going to be applied to the scale of the input surface. What we need is a field and we're going to be using our surface as the field. So bend along surface field. This will convert a surface into a field. This has a few options on it and a few inputs. We'll get to those in a second. The next thing we want to do though is we want to add a way for us to apply this field to our vertices. So let's grab a field, apply vector field, because this is a vector field, right? So if it's blue, vector. If it's orange, scalar. Let's connect this up into our field. Let's connect our vertices into our vertices here. And let's just make sure that this is connecting up. Wow. So uh, it's not terrible, but it's, it's also not good. <laughs> this is to do with these inputs here, right? Um, so the inputs need to be based on our polygon grid. This is how it scales, right? This is how it knows how to scale the polygon grid onto our surface and map the domain of the surface correctly. So what we need to do is add an analyzer bounding box, grab these vertices. Yeah, so basically the way that you can think of it is if a vector has position four, three, and it's going onto a surface domain, which is by default zero to one in U and zero to one in V. So four three doesn't fit within that zero to one and you can see that some of these are basically interpolating to be you know they're essentially following the curve but they're shooting off in random directions and that's just because of the vectors being much much larger than the surface domain by default in fact in this case you can see it's actually being mapped to minus one to one minus one to one so we want to use a bounding box to tell us what the polygon grid size is and then we can use that to map to the surface domain. The polygon grid is 2D, so I can set this boundary box to 2D. So what we're interested in is minimax X and minimax Y. And just be aware of your socket order. We have min X, min Y, max X, max Y, regardless of what order that you turn them on in. And we just need to have a little test to see which, um, which direction is gonna work. So let's grab our min X into U min and our max x into u max, and the same for the y's into v. And if I increase this a little bit higher, yeah, this isn't working correctly. So this means that our u and our v have been mapped in reverse. So let's go the other way. Let's go min x into u, max into u, min max, just like that. And there you go. You can see that, that is now working correctly. That's properly fitting to the chair. So what I can do now is actually change the size of our polygon grid or should I say change the number of polygons in our grid. So in our X direction up here, I want to add a bunch more. This looks around about the right ratio of width to height, something like that. So let's say I want to have these a bit smaller. Let's go 120 or yeah, 100 in the X and 20 in the Y. And there we go. That looks pretty good to me. Nice little mesh look in chair. And yeah, we can do some fun parametric stuff to this. But all I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically inset each face and then export the honeycomb and then solidify it with a modifier. So let's, let's do this like so. I just need to have my polygons here. Let's uh, break that off. Let's use a extrude separate faces, which gives us like inset behavior. We can do this like this. And let's set our scale down to 0.5. And that should, when it loads, 
give us something with basically every face being inset 50%. So that's looking pretty good. I don't want to have all of my polys, I just want to have my other polys, which are the, um, the ones that were extruded, rather than the center face. And there we go. So now you can see that we have this grid. I want to export this with a mesh viewer, and then we can solidify it. Let's remove our temporal viewer, add a viz, mesh viewer, vertices come in, and other polys join into our faces. And there we go. So let's just make sure that we've got this named properly. So we're going to rename this one from Delta to, let's call it Hex, give it the material, and let's give it smooth shading as well. And now let's select our object, modifier, solidify, give it a nice thickness, something like 0.02, and let's also turn on auto smoothing. Let's go and give it a bevel as well, just because nothing in real life has hard edges. Set this up to 80, just to make sure that we have only on our solidified faces, or 75 or something. And we'll set this down to 0.05. And as before, we're gonna turn off clamp overlap, just to make sure that we don't have anything kind of messing up. Cool, something like that is just fine. And let's have a look at it in rendered view. And you can see that if I go in here and I change something about one of these, and I update it, it's just gonna take a little second to update. We're doing three chairs simultaneously at the moment, so just gotta bear with it. You can see that any changes that we actually make to our curves, whatever we're doing to this chair, it's kind of the same for each one. So let's grab these two handles and let's just pull these in a little bit. Uh, let's give this a little bit of a, a privacy thing in some offices or libraries. If you're at university, then you might have seen these in in the, the library. You'll have chairs which have these kinds of privacy screens, basically allows you to do study on your own in a space which is perhaps a little bit more busy. Do something like this. So I've now just given myself another little bit of interest to the surface. Now I'd recommend as well that you can prototype on things like your much smoother one, this first one, which will be much faster to compute, and then apply it to your other meshes later on. Three different chairs made out of two curves manipulated through Sverchark. Now, for the rest of this video, I will literally just be going to just create a scene, kind of similar to how we did it with the rope bridge tutorial. I'm just going to finish with an example of how you can use these techniques um, to, yeah, basically create an entire interior. Hopefully it won't take me too long. I always enjoy doing this kind of thing. So yeah, hopefully this video was enjoyable and informative and catch you in the next one.